welcome back again to our new episode in our podcast. Uh, today we will have a very crucial topic. It will be about insulin resistance in children. Uh, we having Dr. Azza Makro. Okay, thank you so much for being here, Dr. Azza. This is the start uh, in our topic for today. Thank you, Diana. Uh, this day we will discuss insulin resistance in pediatrics, which is a new topic uh, and a storming topic to know what's behind the insulin resistance in pediatrics and why uh, this topic become too much important nowadays especially with sedentary life and after the COVID era uh, and much sedentary life and usage of media, there is too much obese children with too much insulin resistance side. Yeah. Uh, so we wanted to de- define what's insulin. Insulin is a hormone secreted by pancreas, beta cell, uh, and uh, it's a secretion uh, uh, to uh, responding uh, to regulate glucose absorption and metabolism. Uh, insulin is secreted from beta cell in a steady state and in a peak state during uh, feeding. Uh, this insulin is affected by uh, many things, genetic things and uh, other things differ than adult uh, diabetes or adult insulin resistance. In a childhood insulin resistance, drama not uh, due to uh, nutrition or sedentary life alone, there is a big list of causes of insulin resistance in children. And let, uh, let us define insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is something to resist insulin action. So we need to know how childhood obesity can contribute in insulin resistance, especially in children. Childhood obesity defined as a, a, when the body mass index of the child more than 95%, uh, uh, it's actual uh, on, uh, on gross curve, on weight curve. So uh, we have to uh, get the child weight plotted in the curve and they defined it by weight. And when the child reaches this weight, we have an alarming sign and symptoms that, that this child is obese. So why does this obese child have insulin resistance? Because this uh, child they have too much fat, mass, fat, uh, fat size and this fat size secreting adiponectin and this adiponectin interfere with insulin action because this mm-hmm. adiponectin release too much free fatty acid in the blood and this too much free fatty acid make disturbance to insulin action. So uh, this obesity is uh, considered as anti-insulin and not any obesity considers an anti-insulin. We have two uh, types of obesity, which is uh, visceral obesity and subcutaneous obesity and have another ectopic obesity for intramuscular obesity. Uh, it's different from a child to girl, uh, what uh, causing obesity and also co- distribution of body fat, uh, which is uh, beer shape or apple shape. Uh, we, we wanted to exclude also uh, waist to uh, hip ratio, uh, which all uh, contribute to uh, defining obesity. Uh, some uh, also uh, genetic and endocrine factor can uh, uh, be uh, accused with a childhood obesity. So we have to know what is the syndromic or endocrine factor leading to this obesity. Uh, so obesity is a broad in, uh, in a childhood because not overeating alone or sedentary life alone is the leading cause of obesity. So obesity is a big dilemma and we have to catch the inducing factor for obesity. What are the significant signs or maybe red flags that tech tech givers may be aware of? Uh, Every year and or every stage in child life, we have total uh, screening examination. And this examination includes anthropometric measurement of the child, height and weight and height weight ratio and the estimation of body mass index in addition to waist circumference. During this screening in every stage of a child uh, life, mother to have to take away, to uh, take care of uh, this measurement. And when we see some increase of the body weight, which is alarming, more than 85 centile, 
we have uh, considered this a child obese and further screening the child for other symptoms may maybe in early stage this uh, symptoms and sign not visible but when you know your child is cutting off this point you have to search about others uh, we have to look for the feature external for the child sometimes the syndromatic child Sometimes it had a genetic uh, element or endocrine element, and this can't be uh, uh, diagnosed uh, easy by mother. There is doctor also to be face a problem with hair, especially in normal screening. And in this stage, we have to search in everything step by step. We have to search for anthropometric, we have to search for external feature, distribution of fat in this child, we have to see vital signs. Sometimes there's a child they have uh, tachycardia, this a child have hypertension, uh, this a child uh, have abnormal distribution in truncal fat, like in uh, Klinefelter syndrome. This a child they have tall, tall child also not only obese. The child have acromegalic feature of endocrine disorder of growth hormone abnormalities. This a child have Cushing syndrome with truncal obesity, moon face, and the other symptoms. The child have obstructive sleep apnea, which is a common association with obesity. As is a child with asthma also, every child with asthma must be screened well for uh, uh, insulin resistance because this child have sympathetic overstimulation and this is anti-insulin and this is bronze a child for insulin resistance. Uh, most of the child with insulin resistance may have uh, hepatomegaly. This hepatomegaly may be due to congestive heart failure, due to cardiomyopathy induced uh, insulin resistance in some cases, or uh, uh, steatosis due to fatty liver. Some children also have uh, increased abdominal fat, and this abdominal fat to be bloated and measure of the waist. Some child have abnormal in, uh, in jo joint because of it is uh, weight bearing, and we have to look for uh, genovarum. We have to look for flat foot, or flat foot, or any other uh, things like this. Uh, skin changes also is important, like. Uh, I can see the negligence, uh, like tags, the skin tags is too much important, more even than I can see the negligence is dry, uh, which okay. indicate high, uh, high uh, encoaching syndrome and overweight causing like this. All these symptoms is important. We have to take care of all things. Also, we have to know the history of the child, and uh, there is natal and prenatal and postnatal history is too much important to ask the mother about, because sometimes uh, mother with diabetes and the pre-diabetes have a small for gestational age of children, and this may be a sign of insulin resistance later on due to intrauterine growth failure, deficiency of insulin lysis growth, uh, growth factor by, of insulin, or it may be due to uh, uh, intra intra intrauterine um, insulin deficiency, uh, hyperinsulinemia in mother. Also, uh, small for gestational ages, they have a gross part high in uh, first two years, and this accommodates the beta cell of high insulin secretion to build up uh, and to catch gain, and sometimes uh, it may continue like this. Also, in pubertal life and in adolescence, sometimes adolescents it's already have an insulin resistance because you know during uh, uh, pubertal there is a, too much anti-insulin hormone because we need gonadotropins, we need everything for uh, sex differentiation. May, maybe uh, we have to search about uh, uh, sign and symptom of insulin resistance in adolescent because sometimes this high anti-insulin level may continue uh, even after pubertal stage. So screening the child with overweight, don't, uh, don't wait for symptom to appear. Don't wait for signs to appear. Search for it when the child is overweight or have a history of intrauterine blood retardation how to manage insulin resistance. Firstly, if we have, uh, if you can support us with the typical approaches related to or use the two in pediatrics, especially in insulin resistance, how can we, can we approach insulin resistance in pediatrics?
uh, approach started from the intertwined life and how to prepare a mother capable of how a healthy child because a healthy lifestyle of the family will be conducted to the child healthy mother will bring a healthy child educated mother will bring an educated child if you have an healthy mother with no diabetes or pre-diabetes or gestational diabetes uh, you have an uh, a good child if you have an, an uh, pre-marriage uh, examination for couple you will detect the genetic and uh, and uh, chromosomal abnormalities from the start uh, in follow-up of the mother during the pregnancy you will catch up any deviation of growth of the child into right trine. later after a pregnancy and after a uh, First, you have a small for gestational age of child. This child must be uh, uh, adequately uh, uh, followed up. You also, you have to know the abuse of antibiotic will kill the microbiota, which is an important factor in insulin resistance later on. So we have to concentrate in weaning and antibiotic regimen during the course. Uh, also, we have to, to catch early anything, you have to follow the role of screening and early referral to special, uh, sub-specialities to catch the abnormality early and well managed. To have a lifestyle uh, and educated mother know uh, the adequate feeding and the adequate weaning and the adequate breastfeeding, because breastfeeding makes the child respond to infection and makes him at least have the most essential uh, 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 nutrition and uh, uh, adequate growth uh, curve. So everything we have to start from the base, not from the top. If you want to treat uh, insulin resistance, you have to have a good mother and happy family. Dr. Azza, I need to ask you if you have any recommendation for uh, key lifestyle modifications that may affect or may cause the effect related to insulin resistance. Uh, first, life with child uh, lifestyle modification. You have to encourage breastfeeding to two years, and you have okay. encourage uh, exclusive breastfeeding for five months at least. This okay. is first. Second thing, you have uh, to uh, re- decrease beverages and uh, salt and uh, sugar uh, introduction uh, at least for the first one or two years. Uh, not to introduce any sugary uh, or any salty uh, production to the child. At least the child takes it, everything with its natural taste. Uh, second thing, uh, you have an uh, encourage exercise and uh, make uh, exercise, especially uh, especially regular exercise step, regular steps taken by the child and by family. Uh, 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 because uh, exercise makes uh, our regulation of insulin is very well, especially uptake of muscle uh, of glucose uh, independent in insulin. And this will decrease the body fat content and makes the child healthy. Even if not decreasing weight, it will elevate mood and decrease insulin resistance. Exercise have an impact role in decreasing insulin resistance, even if weight not affected. Okay. So exercise and a good balanced diet, especially Mediterranean diet. We are a Mediterranean country, so we don't want to deviate from our natural uh, fruit and vegetable source. We have to take our natural source according to natural uh, position. We have to take Mediterranean diet and the DASH diet, which is DASH uh, diet for uh, hypertensive diet, low in salt. Salt is important as sugar. Both are poisonic and both are count, uh, contribute to the development of insulin resistance. Uh, in addition to lifestyle modification and diet and the exercise, uh, I think resting the mental life is important and uh, uh, we have to contribute country and the country planning uh, and uh, governmental planning in the condition because uh, we have to do a general uh, cooperation in country because this uh, uh, advertising about this junky food and advertising about uh, 
uh, uh, child uh, beverages is too much influ- influencing the income and influencing the behavior of the child. Don't ask me to decrease weight of the child. And when you go to supermarket, you will see everything uh, compressing uh, uh, your uh, your. So we have to know: Are there any medications related to or used to address uh, the uh, insulin resistance in pediatrics? Usually, we start as a lifestyle modification and uh, uh, food. Yes, and, uh, and feeding habits. Uh, and and uh, diagnosing secondary causes of obesity. We don't go to medication or surgery except uh, in some uh, serious uh, condition, and it must be chosen meticulously because everything have a side effect. Oh. Uh, metformin uh, or bigonide, it's uh, the drug of choice in treating insulin resistant and pre-diabetic and childhood, and it is yeah. safe from years old. Uh, and it can regulate uh, uh, liver liver glucose and uh, glucose even in presence of uh, receptor autoantibodies. Uh, but uh, metformin have a long uh, long term side effect, as you know, with B12 deficiency, and so we have to uh, follow up B12 vitamin B12 level in blood and also and take care. And every drug have a side effect. GIT upset is very bad with metformin too. We have to not prescribe uh, metformin in case of diarrhea or gastroenteritis or dehydration. We have to take care of everything. There is another drug which uh, have a local studies, uh, not uh, not too much uh, confirmed, like in quitting, uh, GLP-1 uh, introduced in a minimal uh, level. Sodium glucose co-transporter also, which is responsible for uh, re- uh, inhibition of reabsorption of uh, glucose from gut and, uh, uh, and the kidney. Uh, we have to sometimes uh, to give a statin, which uh, sometimes is statin are responsible about decreasing free fatty acid in blood. Sometimes we give uh, drugs to reduce weight. And this drug also must be taken uh, cautiously because uh, uh, there is habituation usually from uh, usage of this drug. Uh, so uh, drug or medicine not to be given uh, haphazard. There is must be strong indication. Okay, perfect. Finally, I need to ask if you can explain what's the main difference between diabetes and insulin resistance. There is a big concern is about so the terminology and difference between them. So please explain what's the difference between them. Insulin resistant is something which resists insulin action. If we remove these uh, things, the condition will be reversible. You know? Okay, yes. So it may be temporary. Okay, yes. But exactly. diabetes is a disease which is already happened. Okay. When, when, uh, what, what our role in treating insulin resistance? Okay. To treat, to reverse it from compensatory to non-compensatory. Okay. If non-compensatory insulin resistant happen, pre-diabetes happen. And if pre-diabetes okay. happen, diabetes happen. Okay. okay, so uh, breed, uh, so insulin resistant is a, a, a reversible condition if treated well, but diabetes is a, a settled disease. You have to treat. Yeah. Also, insulin resistant can cause type two diabetes. Not necessary to cause type two. May be okay. treated and reversed. Okay. And type two diabetes may be not caused by insulin resistant. Also, insulin resistant not cause type one but can be happen with type 1. Okay. You understand me? Yes. Because type 1 is an autoimmune disease and not related to insulin resistance. But sometimes okay. overeating may cause insulin resistance in type 1. Uh, finally, we have to know that you must be aware of insulin resistance because it may cause diabetes uh, because it's yeah. very crucial yes a very crucial concern uh, it's related all about lifestyle modification which is a very simple and easy strategy we can make it in a very simple manner uh, so it was a great fun interview with you dr azza thank you so much for your valuable insight and your time with me today uh, hopefully to meet you again in another episode with a very crucial topics again thank you so much 
thanks Diana and uh, so meet again inshallah inshallah thank you so much boy thank you bye bye